Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. Uh, today is May the 4th, 2013 for me, but it's always great to have someone like Peggy George with us who lives in my yesterday, so it's still Monday, May the 3rd. Um, so great to have you all with us today. I'm Anne Merch and I teach in a small country school in Western Victoria. It's a prep to year 12 school. I teach accounting and ICT and I act as a web conference coach for the equivalent of one day a week. So it would be great if you put in the chat where you're actually from and maybe what your interest is in education. And oh, did I say June? <laughs> I mean, I said May. I am so sorry, Alistair. It is June. I should really cover that up very quickly. Um, I did that last night. I think I fixed up the one at the end. I don't know what I was thinking of. Let me see if I can cover it up. And I think I'm quickly putting June the fourth. So if you guys could just write in the chat um, where you're from, what your interest is in education, while I fix up my errors. That would be wonderful. So I'll just shift that across and it will be June. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. We would love to know where you are from. Whoops, let's go back a slide. In the world. So if you look at the toolbar that's to the right of the um, whiteboard, yeah, Chris Shambles Guru is in Thailand. So Chris, I don't know if you can if you can actually put one finger on the keyboard and put a marker on where you're from. So the best spot to get it for it to stay is to click on the clip art at the bottom of the whiteboard toolbar, then look for common symbol. And there's lots of little different symbols to use there and then you can click on the board. Yeah, there's no toolbar on the iPad. Why no, Chris? I'm going to have a go at where I think you are. Um, so, oh, hope that worked. I think you might be better with it. Let's put an arrow. So I think Chris, and I'll shift it in a minute, is about there. A bit open, maybe. Up there? Anyway, thank you everyone for coming. That's great. I think we're nearly all marked on that map. Um, I just think that hashtags are becoming increasingly important. And I'm making sure I teach um, what a hashtag is to my students now, because I think it's going to become increasingly used. But when I first got, this is our old digital phone or fax machine at home, which we've still got. When I first used automated banking for our, um, I think I wanted to transfer funds to my bank account, it told me to key in the numbers and then to follow it by the hash key. And I had no idea when I first used it what the hash key was. So yes, yeah, some people call it pound. I think we just call it a hash key now, Chris, because um, it's not really a common symbol in our normal language. Anyway, I think I went on Google and looked and found that this pound sign or hash was the symbol that I had to use. So that would have been about 10 years ago that I first heard of what the hashtag was. Sorry, or what hash was. But I would love to give you a minute. What would your definition be of a hashtag? So for some people, they may not know what a hashtag is. So how would you describe it? <laughs> so if you can, on the whiteboard, what is a hashtag now? What does it mean in digital or technological terminology? So we'd love you to click on the letter A on the toolbar and write across on the whiteboard, how would you classify or what would you explain to students is a hashtag? And is anyone having a go? I'll put the timer on for 30 seconds. Oh yeah, some are, someone's typing, but it's great. And I'll put it on for a minute maybe and we'll just see how we go. So I can see someone's already put the word Twitter on because that is where it's mainly used at the moment. Although I did read that um, Facebook is going to allow a section somewhere or they're trying to incorporate it into Facebook now because of its popularity on Twitter. So has anyone else got any other ideas what a hashtag is or what a definition would be? Ah, I love that. This is the way that hashtags are used. It's a way of connecting with others who share a common interest 
all are part of a common group uh, in Twitter. And Chris had a fabulous definition or an explanation why we would use it before. Oh, sorry, I'll just enable your profile. I don't know why our default doesn't let everyone's profiles come up. There you go, as that. Um, okay, let's have a look. It's also, um, it's a kind of like a meta tag. So people developed web pages, etc. Um, uh, you know, or have been developing web pages, often add meta tags to it. So they're very much searchable. Where do you actually see the hashtags? Can you, um, can you just type on the whiteboard, where have you actually seen a hashtag? Has it just been on Twitter or have you seen them elsewhere? So if I just give you 30 seconds, where have you actually noticed hashtags? And I hope everyone understands what the hashtag is, although I guess you'll get the gist of it as we go through. Could you share with us, where have you actually seen hashtags? Oh good, someone shared a link in there. Hashtags are a great way to build community content. So we've got a great link to have a look on there. <laughs> yeah, on the keyboard, on my phone. Um, it's very commonly used on your mobile phones, etc. You now to get from one section to another. It is a great one to use in passwords, so thanks for sharing that. Okay, any other ways, any other places that you've seen them? Has anyone seen them on Facebook? Has anyone seen them? Uh, on, I actually tag my blog post with that now. I don't know what that's like. So when I um, add a tag to my blog post, I actually add the hashtag in, in the tag spot. If I know it's for you know a um, someone that's already got this, but when I had a bit of a look around last night, these were some of the places that were suggested that we would now see hashtags. So can I get a smile from you? How many of you have actually seen the hashtag worked on you know on tout? Has anyone seen Tout? Do you know what Tout is? Any smiles or maybe a tick or a cross would be good because I hadn't heard of Tout but when I actually went and researched it, Tout was very much like um, Twitter I think. So I don't know how popular that is or how many people are actually on or using Tout. Another spot that we might find it is on Identica. Does anyone know that one? Give us a tick or a cross, let me clear the crosses. So um, I do have links to these, so maybe I quickly find them. So you might like to look up what these sites are at the end of the session. So um, just give me a minute, I've got to just find it on my thing. Oh, I actually looked up the explanation of TOWT on Wikipedia. Um, so you might be able to do that later. Identica, I'm pretty sure, will come up if you do that. Um, what about Instagram? Who's on Instagram? Have you seen hashtags used there at all? Okay, so I'm not sure if it only brings up the hashtag in Twitter. It will be very interesting to see uh, whether this will extend beyond there. But according to, I should have put the link up for these sites that said we may see them on Google Plus or Flickr. So maybe we could experiment um, and just see how, when, where or why those hashtags are. First of all, I'd love to give you two minutes to say, is there anything you would particularly like to know about hashtags? So perhaps between us all, someone will know the answer. And if we don't, we might be able to quickly search together and find out. So is there anything in particular you would like to know? Oh, I feel like I've got the session start from the China. If so, could you write it on the whiteboard or are you just here happy to listen and learn what you can about them? So I'll just wait and see. If anything goes up on the board. 
Otherwise, I'll assume it's silent. Means you're just happy to go along with what's happening. Yeah, I would love to know that too. There's some amazingly interesting and crazy hashtags you use. Um, but if you do go to Twitter, well, how about we've got one minute left and I'm going to have to plug in my laptop. Why don't we quickly search for that tag? So if you go to Google, you need to type in wish it was Friday. And can you see if you can find any, you know, common hashtags with that? I know you made it up, but let's just see. I bet you someone else has used it. And I agree, students are so creative with hashtags. So how about we just give you 30 seconds? I uh, will just um, plug my laptop in and I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, so how did you go? Did you find any? Uh, is that Chris? Who's that? Oh, Peggy. Peggy, do you want to grab the microphone and tell us what you discovered? Okay, no mic. So maybe we can click on that link. And I love tweet chat, and I'm going to talk about that later on. So if everyone clicks on Peggy's link, Tweet chat is dedicated searching for hashtags. Um, and if you click on Peggy's link, she's found a few people have used it. And mine shows from just May the 28th to June the 24th. <laughs> um, and you can see if you do go to that hashtag, people are also adding hash nurse problem, hash one is sleeping. No air con, so obviously someone's got no air conditioning and she wished it was Friday. Okay, so some are rather fun, some are flippant, some are quite serious. I just want to know, is there anyone here um, in the audience that might be able to share something about hashtags? Otherwise, I'll leave the discussion and just show you some of the things I've learnt. So if you could just quickly write on the board if you've got something that you could share or discuss with us, that would be great. And if I don't see anything on the board, we will move on. Or just write in the chat if you've got something. Oh, who needs my permission? Peggy, haven't you got it? Wait a minute. Um, I'll just make you a moderator, Peggy. So if you just share what you want, and I'll just check why you know it, do others have it or not. Go, Peggy. <laughs> I was just starting to type something on that other board, and then you. <laughs> And you switched it. Uh, um, all I was going to say about that, I put in that link to Tweet Chat because that's a great way to follow hashtags, no matter what they are. And so I thought that would be the easiest way to find out if anyone had used the Wish It Were Friday hashtag. And I was surprised that I found a few there. So it was fun to take a look at that. But I have seen some teachers blogging about how creative their students were with the hashtags they were coming up with. And I think they really enjoy it. It's a way to show their personality a little bit and uh, make a point. So that was all I was going to say about that. Thank you, Peggy, and I'm sorry if I cut you off. I don't know why you didn't have a microphone, and I hope everybody else does. I think so. Um, okay, so why do we use hashtags? So some of this has already come up in the chat. For me, when I started on Twitter, I think I had five people follow me, and I felt so terribly lonely because I could read all these conversations that were going on between people, but the people that didn't follow me did not read what I was contributing to the conversation. So it took me, well, it's, I've been on Twitter, I think, for five, six years maybe. And now, of course, I've probably got more than 3,000 followers. So there's no way I can keep up with the conversations of everyone. So to make it easy for me to find out things that I really want to know, I use hashtags. So I might key into tweet chat. Um, I love global ed and I like global classroom. So every now and then I'll just key that into there and see what people are talking about. Another one that I like in Victoria is VicPON um, because they are a very dynamic group of social networkers. 
and I can actually see what the latest conversations are there. Um, yeah, it's tweet chat. The chat's just there with what you like. I'm going to tell you in a minute, I used to love TweetDeck, but Twitter has taken over TweetDeck. Um, in TweetDeck, I can add columns to all my favourite hashtags. Um, but now that Twitter's taken over, I just can't see how I can do that easily now. So in my holidays, I want to play with that. So I think a lot of these points have already been raised. Um, so, you know, we can create communities around those hashtags. Um, with tweet chat, you don't even have to register for Twitter to be able to see how people are, are using the hashtags. But look, I went on Twitter last night and I just looked at some of the tweets that were being shared and what the hashtags that were being used. So this person, Jeanette um, Jane, she's talking about hash kangaroo and hash Aussie pizza. So I assume that she's going to be putting kangaroo meat into an Aussie pizza and giving a student chef a challenge. So then she had an Instagram picture for me to click on and look at. But I read somewhere that we shouldn't use more than two hashtags or else it becomes almost spam-like. But I'm afraid I try and put as many hashtags in as I can if I want to direct my conversation to a broad range of people. But um, I don't know whether you people agree with me, probably the two biggest hashtags for educationalists would be Ed Chat. Would you agree? Yeah, putting I know, putting more like the hashtags in choose up my hundred and forty characters. So um, Ed Chat I think is probably one of the biggest hashtags used. So if you want to go Peggy, I don't know how quick you could be, if you could just give us the link to tweet chat searching for EdTech, people that don't use um, tweet chat very quickly might be able to jump in and just look at the range of tweets that have been added with that um, hashtag. So in a minute, Peggy will add the link. If we all click on it, we can go to tweet chat without registering or without logging into Twitter. So if everybody clicks on that link in the chat from Peggy, I have a look at the conversations that are happening around that hashtag. Um, what I love about hashtags is I look at one tweet that mentions one hashtag and then I see there's some other interesting hashtags that I might like to know more about too. So thank you to Chris or Shambles Guru. He's actually shared hashtags, the glue that holds social networks together. Someone's retweeted it. But Chris added Hash EdTech, Hash MT Chat, Hash CP Chat, Hash Odd Series, etc. So I don't know if you've had a chance to go to Tweet Chat. Um, let's just have a look. Can you let us know in there? Yeah, I'm following the EST hashtag now too um, because there's a lot of stuff happening around that hashtag with a big conference coming up. So has everybody had a chance to look at the um, EdTech? But you could get lost there for hours. There are links to be shared, there's blog posts to read, there's YouTube videos to watch, resources shared, uh, discussions, etc. And if you want to be part of that discussion, add the hashtag in, and other people that then search for that will find it. Now, if you're on Tweet Chat, you will notice that it updates regularly. So you don't have to refresh your screen. And if you want to change the speed at which it updates or refreshes, you can actually click, I think even if you're not on Twitter, the refresh speed, even if you're not logged in. But maybe you do have to log in. Does anyone else want to quickly grab the microphone and add anything there? OK, it's great to see Peggy's actually shared some links with you there now. Um, which we might we will go on to in a minute. Um, I just noticed that with Edutopia, they've actually added a hashtag teachers, and that's one that I probably haven't seen a lot of. So it's probably worth putting hash teachers into tweet chat too, just to see what comes up there. Be forewarned though, this is all open, um, so there could be things in there. Oh no, teachers is used quite a lot too. 
So someone's looking for the Arabic teachers uh, using possible to me for language, etc. So sometimes there's things that you can join in, links, um, you know, projects to join, etc. Uh, and why did I add that one? I think because there's an edgy tech conference on up in Queensland at the moment. So that edgy tech hashtag will be very active at the moment. Now, Peggy's put in some great um, resources from Cyberary Man. He's gone through such a lot of trouble to gather and collect um, lots of hashtags. He's classified them. I think they're in alphabetical order. And Twitter chats are fabulous, and we'll spend a bit of time talking about that. But what is everybody interested in at the moment? Is anyone doing anything in the classroom? What topic could you share on the board? And maybe we could search um, and see if we can find anything through our hashtag on Twitter or tweet chat. So has anybody got anything they're studying or would like to research now? If so, give me 30 seconds to write it on the board. And then I thought it'd be rather fun if we could um, quickly look at, see if we can find anything. I've just got my timer up for 30 seconds. Anybody doing anything? You're doing any research or study? Or um, what about the latest tornado? Yeah, wildfire. Peggy, the latest to it was a tornado in the US. Are they still? Was there a hashtag for that? Do you know what it was? Or do we just search tornado? Sometimes when there's a really a real um, natural disaster, a specific hashtag may be used. And uh, how do you know what, have you got any ideas how you find the trending tornado, the hashtag for an event? Okay, let's go to tweet chat quickly and let's put in either hash wildfire or tornado. So up the very top you'll see tweet chat, you'll see our hashtag um, and then you can put in Either tornado or wildfires. Let's see what we get. So you'll get people's feelings, emotions. They'll be sharing sites. Um, they'll share pictures in real time. Uh, then you'll find some people just just jump on the bandwagon and add things that perhaps aren't so um, of high interest. But yes, there is lots of action with the tornado one. Pictures, stories, tips, what's going to happen in the future because of all that, uh, what's happening today, the latest death toll, lots of sharings and links in there. So can we just get you in the chat? Are you all okay? Are you all following that tweet chat? So you're sort of toggling between Blackboard, Collaborate and clicking on the link. Peter, can I get you to grab the microphone and just let us know have you been following and doing, looking at the tweet chat hashtag search? Peter, over to you. Yeah, I've been having a look at some of the um the links that were in the uh, tweet tech window just there, um, and it's, to me, it's, it looks as though they're um, related to the, the latest in the, the news. You've only got to put in just the word itself, and Twitter will find the website regarding those events. Is that correct? Yeah, it will. It will find all the conversations, usually on Twitter, that are happening around that event. So people are actually experiencing it, will be using their mobile devices to share what's happening. <coughs> they may share photos, etc. So it's almost giving you an up-to-date news feed um, if people are actually caught up in the action. And then other people will be doing research and looking up where the centre of that tornado is, you know, giving you some of the stats, etc. I can see that a timeline has been shared Oh, it's blocked at my school, so I can't share that with you. So if you were using it with students or adults and you're studying that topic, there's lots of resources and things for them to find and learn about. So yeah, the storm chaser death was really sad. Um, so I find that 
Google gives you sites, etc. But Twitter gives you people, their emotions, their feelings, their resources, their experience, etc. Okay, so um, Alistair, I hope you're going okay with all this too. Um, so we just search for that with the hashtag. Okay, do any of you follow any of the educational hashtags? Uh, we probably covered some of these, but maybe I just give you um, two minutes to share which are the ones that you keep using a lot or go searching for. So I'm going to drop the microphone and let you have a couple of minutes to write on the board which are probably your favourite hashtags. Um, Chris, what does NT chat? What does the NT stand for? Can you add that? Uh, can you grab the microphone or put in the chat? I think you're in a session. So Chris is amazing. He's actually in a cafe with his mobile device listening to this. Yeah, I use TweetDeck columns too, but since um, Twitter took it over, Peggy, it's not working anymore. Oh, new teacher, fabulous. Okay, I'm just going to add mine on the board. So please grab the mic if you want to say something while I'm putting mine on. So to link my tweet to that particular website, I'd put the hashtag in before the, the title. Uh, Peter, not to actually link to the website. Um, okay, so let's have a look. Maybe I'd go to Twitter and show you what I would do. So give me a minute. I'm going to, oh, is everybody put their stuff up on the board? Sorry. Um, so Shambles Guru's sharing some more. Maybe we use the chat now to share what we want to do. So Peter, this is what it would look like for me. So hang on, i just got to maximise that. I'm going to share my screen. Because, sorry, if people don't know how to do it or how to use it, um, we need to share that first. Sorry, I'm just lining up my internet. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you. So I'm just going to go to Twitter itself because that's probably where you would be. So I want to create a new tweet. So I want to say that I'm in a session uh, we, I'm going to add some people's name in here. So I'm saying that these are the people in my session. Pedro, are you on Twitter? If you are, can you put that in the chat, your Twitter handle? So I'm in a session with you guys uh, learning about hashtags. But I want people to know that we're going to be, you know, uh, perhaps sharing some things, etc. So I want to bring this tweet to the attention of the Vic Personal Learning Network because our web series uses Oz series. So people that want to know what we're doing in the Australia series, I say Oz series. Um, what else could I put in there? Maybe, maybe I'll put a hash in front of hashtags. Um, and maybe Ed Chat. So the people that follow that hashtag of Ed Chat know that there's a webinar session on and then I'm going to share the link in case people want to still come in. So just a minute, I've got to find my link now. I think that's it. I'll go back to Twitter. So I'm just going to share the link in case they want to come in and I tweet it. So that hashtag simply is a way of alerting you to what I'm saying in the tweet. And if I want you to take you to another link, you'd have to click on the Illuminate link to come into the session. I, Peggy, well, how would you describe it? Would you like to have a go, Peggy? I'm not quite sure what you're trying to describe, how, how the hashtag works within the, the Twitter message. Is that what you mean? Yes. I don't think I'm doing a very good job because I think Peter thinks it takes you oh. to a link or to a website, but it doesn't no. just alert people to a conversation. 
Well, it brings it all together. So that's how TweetChat can put all of the messages related to the very same topic or group together on that one page and keeps feeding them through. It's by the common hashtag. Now people could have other hashtags in there. You see how yours has come up there? And it also went out to everyone in those other groups. So if you have a column in TweetDeck, which is what I do, and I, and I have a column that's hashtag EdChat, then that same post would appear in the EdChat column as it would appear in the other hashtags you used, like VICPLN. Is that what you were thinking? Thank you, Peggy. Peggy, I hope that sort of made it um, a little bit more um, uh, clear as to what a hashtag is and how it's used. It's really a tagging device. Um, to be able to search for topics, people who might or are interested in that. Okay. One other thing, thing I could mention, Anne, um, yeah. in uh, TweetChat, you can type right there in that on that web page. So you don't have to go into Twitter to send your message. So you can see right there at the top, there's the box to type your message. And what it does is it automatically adds the tweet chat hashtag to the end of your message. So you're in a group there for pound tornado. So if you were to send a tweet using that hashtag, it would go to everyone who's following that hashtag and it would automatically add it there. So you don't have to type it in. Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> I was chatting away nicely to myself. Um, I don't know if you've seen Tag Board, but that actually does a search through Facebook, Pinterest, uh, Twitter, etc. But I think it might be blocked at school. Do you want me to quickly bring it up and show you what? Yeah, it's like, I think it's like Flipboard. I'm not sure what Flipboard does. But if I'm blocked at school, Peggy, can I get you to have a go at it? So it's just a site that you go on. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just keying it in to see if I'm blocked. Would you believe no? Because it's so new, I don't think <laughs> the um, people that set up our blocked sites have found it. So let me start sharing this. So this is another option to search for tags. This one though, you do have to register. Uh, I just want to, I, sign, I don't sign in with them. How do I sign in now? Let me go up here, hopefully. I can just go in there with my email address. Oh, I don't think I can. So I'll sign in with Twitter. I have to authorise the app. And it just takes a few minutes. So now, let, which one would you like me to put in? Do you want me to put in the tornadoes or Ed Chat maybe? Maybe I'll do Ed Chat. So people are interested in a chat, it brings up this screen. So when you look at all the things that people have um, tagged with a chat, you can see it's mostly Twitter. So I hope you can see the little symbol on the right hand side has got the Twitter icon. But here's a Google Plus. So if someone's used the Ed chat, Ed chat, sorry, hashtag in there and if I scroll down it's still mainly Twitter isn't it? Let's have a look just for tornadoes and see if that pulls up more. So you can see it pulls up the hashtags that are used in Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I don't know what that one is, do you? From that one or that one? Okay, thanks for coming.
Is that Chris? No, Alistair. Thanks, Alistair, for coming. Let me just quickly go in here and I'll just put tornado and see what comes up. So here we've got a few more social networking sites that have been used. So now I'm not quite sure what some of these symbols are here. Oh, does anyone know? But it's pulling up photos. So someone's sharing photos of the aftermath, etc. Um, Twitter coming up, etc. So just with tag boards, you do need to register for that one. Tweet chat, you don't even have to register to be part of that um, searchable option. Okay, let me bring you back to the whiteboard. So if you can, what you can just search how to actually add or how to use any of the um, tweet deck, boot suites, etc. There's lots out there. But what I would like to do is share with you what I did with my students last Friday. We were really lucky. To, in our school, we've got what's called polycom equipment. So it's high definition poly, polycom video conferencing. So our school was one of two in Victoria who linked up with Canberra School. So here is the school in Canberra. Who, it was a senior school. They were in the auditorium. And on the stage in front of them are parliamentarians or politicians from Canberra. And they were brought together just before our federal election to listen to the student voice, to learn from the students what questions they have, what are their burning or hot issues, what are they thinking about. Oh, okay, Peggy, so that was fine. So these are my students. They actually registered for Twitter um, that day because um, while the questions and answers were going on, our school was only allowed one question. So this is Georgia actually asking her question, the politician. And it was about the cost of country students going to the city for tertiary education. When the Canberra students had their opportunity, we simply saw them come up on our polycom screen. Now some students chose not to register for Twitter, but what I did do was get them all to go into tweet chat so they could at least follow the hashtag. And the hashtag was um, GCF2013. So they actually put that hashtag into tweet chat and they were able to follow all the questions and all the conversations for those students around Australia who are actually using Twitter um, to share conversations. And what I found was that when that question was asked about the cost of country versus city, the kids started to have a real discussion because my students know how much it costs to go to the country, but the city kids were arguing that it's the country kids that get the scholarship. Um, one of the hot issues for them was legalisation of gay marriages. So that started a fairly interesting conversation going on Twitter. So Peggy, it was wonderful. First of all, it gave the students a reason to get on Twitter because they so often just want to be on Facebook and instant messaging. And they straight away followed tags and all sorts of things. So yeah, lots of ways of using Twitter for that. So here's some of the conversation that occurred around that hashtag. So at the end of the, oh, you know, during the conversation, um, Effie Roberts, Seb Robertson talked about fielding insightful questions, hearing from Canberra's next generation of leaders. Um, this came in after that amazing day. Um, so you can see how the hashtag was used all the time. Um, Chloe said that schools need to create an environment that students want to be in not somewhere where they have to be, etc. So you can go that hashtag. You can see at first the kids were really um, being silly. They were told not to bring their lunch in the theatre. So they're talking about who's going to be the first to eat it or you know, watch the lunch fly. But then they got onto the serious conversations, yeah. So these are some of the apps that you can use in Twitter tools to use with those hashtags. And Peggy, I think you shared those. Did you share both those in the conversation before? If not, I'll just grab my links to some of those because 
people have um, actually shared a lot of jazz that we might be interested in. So if you're interested in iPad or um, using different things, etc., uh, there's all there's a hashtag for most things. I'll share the hash the 300 hashtags with you. I've just got to grab the um. This was from Edgemic, so I'll just drop this one in the link in the chat. And then Noyukia, who works a lot with the Educators Guide to Innovation, shared a lot and asked other people to share as well. So this is the link to her, which I'll just drop in the chat. So lots of research and lots of things to go on with if you're interested. But not only that, um, people are now using those hashtags in the classroom. So I really like the top one, uh, the Moo URL. So I use this for shortening a lot with my students because they can all spell Moo and the URL. So my younger students, I give them either a QR code or a Moo URL that's shortened because they seem to be able to cope with that, spell it correctly and not get lost. And then there's one on how the hashtags can change. Let me drop that one in the chat. So uh, how hashtags can be used for events, etc. So you might like to look at those now or you might like to have a little look later on. But I'm very, um, I think I'm going to create a hashtag for our school because when the students use the hashtags here in Canberra, um, I would have loved them to have added the hashtag for our school so that people could actually see that they were coming from Hawksdale P12 College. So I don't know if any of you have any opinions on that, but that's what I would like to do. Um, and Peter's already mentioned the tweet chat. So these are usually dedicated hours where a hashtag is used to share conversation or professional development over that hour. The one that I love to join in is Global E. Because, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Please ignore that. It's Global Classroom. So three times a month. There's a one hour in three different times to suit all time zones dedicated to a, a topic, a conversation, around global classrooms. So the topics are usually predetermined. So they go on a website and then you can actually see what's going to be discussed. You can either follow the discussion in real time or you can go back to the um, archive. So I'll just give you the archive link in case you're interested in seeing what that actually looks like. Oh dear, I didn't keep the thing, so I might search for that. Peggy, do you do any um, of the tweet chats for professional development? Can I just give you the microphone and I'll just quickly grab that link. How have you used it or what have you noticed around um, tweet chat PD and one hour dedicated conversation? I have participated in quite a few um, tweet chats and uh, you'll notice on the Cyberman uh, site that he actually lists, has a separate listing for the tweet chats that occur at certain times on certain days of the week. So like it may be every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time that a tweet chat will be held for a particular group. And the advantage to that is that you're all there at the same time and and you can actually have a conversation whereas if it's just using the hashtag, things could come in any day of the week and um, you know by anyone and at any at, at any time. So um the Twitter chats that I've been in have been really interesting and I was in one um, last week on digital storytelling and it was most of the, the really good ones have facilitators and this particular night they had a couple of facilitators 
but one of them was Bernard Jean Porter, who is now leading the ISTE digital storytelling group. And she would uh, put out questions to the group and so guide a conversation by asking people to respond to that question. And you'll see a lot of retweeting because people are hearing great things that they really want to share with someone else. So they'll retweet it out to their own groups using the hashtag for digital storytelling. So it appears with the hashtag, but it also goes out to new people that way. So Peggy, do you have a link or what was the hashtag that Bernard Jean used if we want to look at it? Um, great explanation, Peggy. Thank you. I'll I try to grab it. Lots, yeah, thanks. I also find I've met lots of different people who share a common passion with me by following the tweet chats or um, even just by following hashtags. So it's a great way to meet people who've got um, a common interest. The other thing that now has to be done by conferences, and I think all the conferences I've gone to, have a hashtag. So if I should be in a session and I couldn't get to another one, I can actually see what people are learning in that session, getting the resources that might be shared, because they're actually sharing it using the conference hashtag. So the one I went to on uh, Saturday um, was the ICTV conference. So that was their hashtag. Has anyone else attended conferences? Oh, you've got the ISTE conference coming up. So it's ISTE 13 is the hashtag for the conference. So anyone that's interested in learning about what's happening prior to, during or even after can actually go to tweet chat, key in those hashtags and follow the conversation. Does anyone else want to grab the microphone? and talk more to any of that. I might say, going back to my students and the link up with Canberra, I asked one of the girls what she thought about tweet chat and she said it was terrific because you don't just get one opinion. Like the people, uh, the parliamentarians or politicians have one opinion and then you see so many opinions coming from both students and the others that were on the panel. So when you go to a conference or if you know there's a big conference on, see if you can work out um, you know, what the hashtag might be. Oh, Peter, I'd just love to show you this if I can. I'm just going to share my screen again. Because sometimes when you go on Twitter, when you go on Twitter, if you scroll down, you'll see what the trending hashtags are or words. So I hope you can see my screen now. So all I've done is just go to my Twitter and log in. So Twitter, first of all, tells me it tells me the top photos that I've made. Oh, I want to show you this. Look at this. We linked up today with Quantum, which is the Science and Technology Centre in Melbourne. But look at these 3D printers that students and some of the people that work at Quantum created. So I don't know if you've seen a 3D printer in action, but this is a homemade one and it's fabulous. Right, let me take you back to Twitter. <laughs> um, you've got who to follow or suggestions, but if you scroll down you get the trending hashtags and words. So straight away Edutech is trending because there's a big conference on up in Queensland. So lots of people are sharing information and retweeting etc from there. So when the tornadoes are on or floods or something, or if you're interested in the soccer roof, um, if it's a trending topic, you can actually go to Twitter and click on that hashtag and it will immediately pull up um, his unpopular um, opinion. I don't know if I'm going to look here, so hopefully it's okay. Um, I don't know why, but that's trending at the moment. I think I'll get out of that because I think I'll get some interesting things come up and go to is trending at the moment. So you can, in Twitter you can also click on the hashtags and just follow the conversation. Okay, let me take you back to stop sharing. 
Um, Peggy, thank you, has actually shared some resources for us. Just to quickly finish off though, um, I work as a web conference coach for digital learning in our education department. And we wanted to create a hashtag that would share um, things to do with virtual conferencing. And we wanted that to include you know, conferences that use Blackboard to collaborate. Um, uh, Microsoft Link is another software type that we're looking at. Skype, etc. So when people are web or virtual conferencing, um, this could be a hashtag that could be created for them to follow. So this is what we came up with. We wanted it to be shown as educational, so we used ED, and then we simply added BC for virtual conferencing. So I went on Twitter first of all and searched for it, and no one actually claimed that as a hashtag. So to make sure people know what that hashtag is for, I've registered on hashtag.org. I also went to tag death and registered it there as well. And unfortunately I ran out of time, so I've still got to go to TWAB. Because people are suggesting these are the three main sites to go to if you wish to register a specific hashtag. But Chris has shared the hashtag there. But unfortunately I think someone else just uses it on a irregular basis. So sometimes I've seen some things that come up there that aren't actually related to the virtual conferencing. So I don't know if anyone wants to share anything on creating hashtags. If you want to let people know exactly what that hashtag is about or not. So I'll drop the microphone. Peggy, have you had any experience with creating it? <laughs> Here we go, now we've got Peggy in there. Peggy, have you done anything with creating hashtags? Okay, well I'll just put these sites in in case you ever do want to make one. As I said, I think I'm going to create one for our school now because as we start to use um, Twitter and the internet more and more, here we go, have I got mentioned? So Tweet Chat lets you not only search the tags, I want to go and see what that says, but it also lets you search for words, etc. Did it come up with anything? I don't think it has. Um, it's not for me. I don't know if Peggy came up with anything. Okay, let's get back on task. Um, yeah, so Peggy, can you just explain what, what they do with that? So that the class would be 5C or 6A studying something. So go ahead, Peggy. Well, what I've seen them do, it, it might include the teacher's name in the hashtag. So uh, it might be George... Uh, 1C, and that would be uh, first period class, the, the letters and numbers would mean something. So it would be their second period class, their third period class, all with that teacher's name. And so that way when they're submitting maybe answers to a question and some sort of a, a reflection that the teacher has asked them to respond to on Twitter, and they use that hashtag, it will then aggregate them, bring them all together for the students from that one class. I think it's a great idea. That is a great idea, Peggy. Um, yes, think... and do you see what Shambles is saying there? That's the real bonus that they just you just make it up and tell the students to use that hashtag. It could even be for the subject of the day. I don't know if you're you're talking about tornadoes. You know that hashtag. All the students in in that class could be using the same hashtag for tornado and the same hashtag for their class. So that brings that topic together for them. Yeah, fabulous idea. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start thinking a bit beyond the square with those hashtags in Twitter. What, what intrigued me was that some of my students didn't even want to go on Twitter, but it doesn't matter because they can be following it in tweet chat anyway. I must also say um, that it was blocked, tweet chat was blocked at school, but the um, 
our school's really good. If teachers want to use it educationally in class, we can request to have it um, unblocked. And I like what Chris is saying, start using the hashtag for all digital media like Flickr, Instagram, oh Peggy, you know you found what those coloured um, icon was on the side? Peggy said, you, can you tell us, what was it exactly? Are you talking about the different symbols that were showing up on tag board? Yeah, um, what I did was just search around a little bit to see what was actually getting posted there. And uh, for tornadoes, it was very interesting to me that nothing was showing up for Facebook. So that makes me wonder uh, exactly how that works with Facebook. The green symbol was Vine, which is just another social media site. Um, but almost all of the things that were populating Tornado came from Instagram with all the photos and Twitter. Now, I know a lot of times people will cross-post. Like, I'll post something on Twitter and have it cross-post to my Facebook page. So um, the hashtag will still be there in that post on Facebook, even though it was created on Twitter. Mm, how interesting. Okay, well, I think that's what we've sort of learnt a lot. Of, I think I've learnt a lot about... Um, <laughs> oh, thank you for the question, Peggy. Hang on, Peter, have you got a question? Yeah, that was going to be uh, my question after uh, what Peggy had just said, whether it was um, possible to put a, uh, a tweet tag into, or a hashtag rather, into um, a statement that you make on Facebook and whether it would take you straight to the, uh, the link or not. Well, maybe we can experiment with that um, tonight. Anyway, look, our time is up, so thank you so much for coming. Um, I always want to share with you, Chris said to put ash in everything. There's always something to be learned. So thank you all for contributing to the conversation. Um, uh, just to let you know, next week will be advised still. I haven't worked that one out. So if you've got any suggestions, um, I'm trying to get Jenny Ashby at some stage to talk about her 24 hour Skype marathon. So I've still got to get onto her whether next week works or not. Um, but then just to tell you where you can find us, that's where you'll find out what will be on next week. So thank you very much again for coming. Now there's lots of resources in that chat. So if you go to File, you can go to Save, Chat, and Save the Chat Conversation um, as a text file. The most used tool by all teachers. Actually, that's a good topic, Chris. I must keep that. I agree. It'd be really interesting to know. What do you reckon it will be? Any ideas yet? <laughs> um, I, I often think my answer will be Twitter, but so many of my really well-connected colleagues um, they don't use Twitter, or most of them do of course, it's a trick question, yes. Um, actually that would be a great one to talk about, wouldn't it? Okay, um, I'm going to stop the recording there. Thank you again. Don't forget to share resources. The room will be open for another five minutes to make sure you save everything. And then we hope to see you uh, next week or in a session very soon.